Hello everybody and welcome to this Burp Suite Advanced Part 1 course from Bograd University. Um, part 1 will be about uh, tips and tricks on Burp Suite um, as well as improving your workflow so you can work faster. Um, part 2 will be a deep dive in uh, Burp Intruder uh, using macros and session handling rules as well as useful extensions to improve um, how, you use, how you use Burp. My name is uh, Jasmine Landry, uh, aka JROC17. I'm a senior cybersecurity engineer at SecureOps, a small company in Montreal, Canada. I'm a pen tester uh, by day, bug bounty hunter by night, and I also play uh, hockey um, in my free time, if I have any free time. And this module, uh, we're going to start off by viewing um, configuration settings uh, and then switch over to um, the target tab and then uh, the proxy followed by the repeater and then uh, intruder and then uh, we're going to view uh, some hotkeys or shortcuts as well as uh, hackverter and um, which is an extension as well as logger plus plus which is extremely useful and then resources and references so let's start off with configuration and settings uh, so when you start a burp um, there are, there are two options here, uh, which you can di um, disable extensions on startup. I suggest doing this uh, simply because Burp will load up faster. And also because, um, well, I, I personally tend to use some extensions depending on what technologies are used on the, on the website. So if they're not needed uh, for my current project, then my, there's no point of enabling it because it'll just use uh, resources. So um, I just suggest to simply um, disable extensions on startup, and you can also default to, um, I mean, default to the above in the future as well. Um, so in Burp, you have um, project options and user options. Um, a lot of people mix mix them up a bit. Uh, so project options uh, is configuration and settings that apply to. Um, the application uh, that you're hacking. For example, um, you can configure macros, such as handling rules, and everything that re is related to um, what you are hacking. Um, while the user options, uh, this mo this applies to um, the settings that you apply in Burp itself. For example, the upstream proxy, uh, UI theme, if you want to use the uh, dark theme, uh, hotkey shortcuts, um, so on and so forth. I'm just going to start off by showing you guys a few um, useful project options um, that I configure myself. I don't need to, but I mean, it's, it's, it's your own preference, preference except that uh, I suggest doing so because it'll just optimize your how you use Burp. Uh, for the first one, uh, being in the project options in the HTTP um, sub tab and in redirections, um, by default, the JavaScript driven is not enabled. Um, so sometimes when you browse to a website, um, you'll get redirected by JavaScript, uh, except when you replay the, that same request in, um, in Burp, it'll be like a 200 OK. So you won't be redirected to um, the destination page. Um, and this sometimes like it's just you're just like what is going on? Why am not why am I not being re redirected? Well, this is because this option is not enabled. Uh, it doesn't follow JavaScript driven uh, redirects. So this is useful in some cases. Um, you can enable it, disable it as, as as you want. But I prefer enabling it just because I I want to know what the what would happen if I actually did browse to the uh, to the endpoint. Uh, next up, um, sessions. Uh, uh, next up in project options, um, under the MISC uh, sub tab, uh, we have schedule task and Burp collaborator. Um, so schedule tasks, you can we can add. Um, I mean, it's pretty simple. Schedule task. Uh, so if you want to schedule a scan, well, you can do it from here. Um, and for Burp collaborator. Burp Collaborator server, sorry. Um, here, if you have your own Burp Collaborator instance, you can configure the settings uh, in here. So this is useful um, if you want to own, run your own uh, collaborator, collaborator instance. And then under the Sessions uh, sub-tab, um, we, um, we have the session handling rules, cookie jar, and macros. 
Uh, these are really useful um, features to use in Burp. Uh, we're going to view um, more on it in the next uh, next course. This will be it'll be real fun. Uh, so under the um, useful user options, um, uh, on the, in the display sub-tab, um, we can play with the user interface a bit. Uh, if you want to switch to the dark theme, this is where you do it, as well as if you want to change the font size or um, the font itself. Um, this is literally where you, you want to change your the GUI. This is where you, you play with the, with the settings. And under the MISC uh, sub-tab, um, we have the hotkeys, or shortcuts if you want to call it. Um, we're going to heavily use um, hotkeys in this course. Uh, the reason is because it makes your workflow a lot faster, so it avoids having you to, uh, to click and right-click everywhere in Burp. Uh, if you can just use the keyboard, it'll go a lot faster, as you'll notice when you uh, eventually play with it. Um, I started using hotkeys not too long ago, and I'm—I mean, I, I can't go back to uh, clicking everywhere. It's, re it's really nicer to just use shortcuts all the time. So this is where you would do it. Uh, there are some defaults um, which are already there. Uh, you can either leave them as is, or you can add your own um, shortcuts. Um, it's really on your own uh, preference. And this is a nice feature as well under MISC, uh, Proxy Interception. If you ever started Burp uh, and then started browsing around and you have been and you waited for the page to load and you would be waiting for a minute and still not there, then you go in Burp and realize that your Proxy Interception is on. And then you're like, oh, I should have checked first. Well, this is a good setting for you because you can disable um, your Interception Proxy on startup. So that you can just, as soon as you launch Burp, well, you can just browse around and not worry about having your your proxy um, inception on, so you can actually browse and not have to wait for the page to load forever. Um, if you also need help on a, on a perf on a, sp on a specific setting, um, Burp has a good documentation for every single setting. If you just click on the question mark. Um, for, a, for a setting, well, it opens up a, a little page that explains what exactly this setting do does. Um, and not, not, not all the people use it, but it's definitely useful if you need help on understanding exactly what it does. Um, I really suggest reading through it if you actually need to know um, what it does. And uh, let's say you configured a lot of options, then you, then you have to save them. Um, you can either save each option separately, um, but I don't suggest doing so because you'll just have plenty of different files. Uh, what you can do is actually save all of it at the same time. So if you just um, go to the burp main menu um, under user options, there you can save your user options. And let's say you open a new project, you can load your user options that you saved previously. So that way you don't have to configure your settings every single time you launch Burp. Alright, so let's start um, looking at the Target tab. So here, to switch to the Target tab, if you're, let's say, in Repeater or Intruder or whichever um, tab, if you press Control shift t or in Mac it would be um, Command-Shift-T, that will switch you over to the Target tab. I'm going to use these shortcuts all along. Um, so just for you guys to get familiar with the uh, verb shortcuts. So by pressing Control Shift, Control Shift T and going in the scope, um, here we define a scope as you obviously know. Uh, I suggest using the, uh, the regex so that it's easier to configure um, and control as well. And also uh, you can exclude some specific um, um, endpoints if you'd like from the um, exclusion list. Um, for example, um, we often get like cases where there are often like a, a health check or something and that request just loads our burp history, uh, burp proxy history, sorry. And it's kind of, kind of annoying. So what we, what we can do is just right click on the request itself and remove it from the scope and that's it. It'll Our history uh, will be clean. So we can configure um, 
exclusion list like this for annoying requests which are just there all the time or for example if you don't want to um, test something specific because it's out of scope well this is the perfect way to do it and then if we go to the previous tab sitemap we can press on control minus and thus this will switch us to the previous uh, sub tab so if you click on filter uh, we have lots of filter options in here we can um, show um, all MIME types or only specific MIME types, uh, filter by status code, all that stuff. Um, I suggest showing everything to start off so that you see everything that's going on, on the, in the web application. Um, but eventually you might want to filter some stuff out. Um, so to do so, um, I mean, you just click on filter and, and hide what you want. And um, I also suggest showing only what you have in scope so that you don't go out of scope. Um, but obviously this is a per case scenario. Sometimes you, you have to go out of scope or sometimes it's literally everything. You're just looking at everything you can. Um, so yeah, I mean, as, stay be between the rules of, of what you're testing is what I'm trying to say here. And we also have a similar uh, proxy, his also, sorry, a similar filter in proxy history. Uh, there are a few differences, but it's practically the same. So I'm not going to review this again in, when we look at the proxy tab. And also uh, something that's nice in the um, in the uh, sorry context menu is that if you right click on a host um, or endpoint or whichever and go to engagement tools, we can find references. What this does is let's say you you see that endpoint and you don't know where you found it by using this find references tool or feature um, it'll show you where exactly uh, it got reference from so sometimes you 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 have like a, a grayed out um, as we can see here the docs at burp.com is like a bit grayed out so that means like it hasn't been requested yet but burp did find it through um, uh, like spiring for example um, you can find where you got reference from using this um, amazing tool so I suggest using it. Um, it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's useful when you need it. And one really cool tool as well is the simulate manual testing. Uh, let's say you're like, uh, you're testing, um, it's past your bedtime and you want to continue testing else your, your session will expire and you'll have to start again. Uh, well, by using the simulate manual testing, what it, this does is manually as if someone was actually testing. So it'll make random requests to the application um, while you're sleeping. So that when you wake up in the morning, well, you still have your session open. Um, this is if you, if there's not uh, like an expiry time on your session. Uh, this is really useful as well in like other cases. For example, you just need to go uh, take a shower or just take a, a fresh air outside, go walk the dog. Uh, these are, are good cases where you could use this um, so that your your session uh, stays open for the break that you're taking and I suggest taking breaks uh, once in a while sometimes it's just nice to uh, get your head out of, of testing um, sometimes just leaving your desk for a couple of minutes uh, we don't realize but it's good for your brain and once, once you come back well there you go you found the bug so yeah I suggest taking breaks and then uh, if we press Control shift p we'll switch to the proxy tab. So in proxy, um, we have, of course, the HTTP history, which is a history of everything that we've browsed. Um, this will show, like I said earlier, um, everything um, that we have in our filter. Uh, if we remove certain files, well, it won't show in the, the proxy history. Um, and one useful thing as well, uh, if you tend to do like me and browse an application um, like as much as you can, use all features before actually testing and trying to find bugs, um, it's nice to highlight interesting requests. So what I what I usually do is um, like have a screen on of my uh, of my browser and another one with Burp, and if I see something weird while browsing, I highlight that request. Um, that specific request in Burp so they can go back to it later and test it properly. Because if I start testing while I haven't finished browsing, then like if you're, if you're like me, you'll just like 
test everything you can and not use the application um, properly and you might just miss bugs because you you haven't checked every single feature and uh, once you're once you've done browsing and viewing all the all of, all of the application uh, and let's say you've highlighted some requests then you can uh, show only your highlighted or commentary requests you can also paste comments uh, put comments um, for a specific request for let's say uh, you could say oh, this might be interesting for XSS or SQL injection or, or whichever bug type or just put like a, another comment just for yourself uh, like test this first or, or whichever I mean it's literally you can put literally anything in there uh, if we switch sub tabs and we go to WebSockets now uh, this is a brand new feature from Burp um, we're everybody's pretty happy that this is we can now replay WebSockets request um, we're not gonna go too deep into this um, since it's pretty new and I haven't to be honest I haven't tested it that much yet uh, since I haven't had the opportunity but I'm pretty sure it's just as similar as the regular um, repeater I mean once you've tested um, in a repeater and then if we switch tabs again by um, sub, I mean sub tabs by pressing control plus um, here we have the proxy options. Um, something really useful is the match and replace rules. Um, what I typically do is put a blind access payload in the user agent, uh, simply because usually websites log um, your user agent. So, I mean, we never know where it'll be logged. So I typically put one in there. And depending on what you're trying to test, uh, sometimes just by to bypass client side controls or just make it easier to do. Um, and faster to test so instead of putting your own your payload every single time in every single field you can just put like a, a keyword for example SSTI or if you're putting uh, if you're testing records test put XSS so that you can put your payload um, I mean you can simply put XSS instead of pointing your whole payload every time so it'll be really easier instead of like copy pasting and you know it just makes it a lot faster and also uh, we can see here a tweet from John Botterini um, he used match and replace rules to find hidden features and elevate his, his uh, client-side permissions. So he had a case where, um, I think it was a cookie, I don't remember the exact, uh, exact blog post that he put, but um, so he had like a, a, a user-level setting where it was read-only, and by having a match and replace rule to replace the read-only by admin, he had actually got a privilege escalation and had admin rights on the, on the application. So I, strong, I, strong, uh, sorry. I strongly suggest um, using match and replace rules. It's really useful, and uh, eventually you'll get really comfortable with it. Um, you can use you can use basic strings uh, as their as their rule, or you can use regex as well. And there's also some built-in one within Burp, which are actually pretty cool. I think you can test um, cores misconfigurations by adding uh, your own specific host and see uh, how it works, um, as well as other um, rules as we can see here now if we switch to the repeater tab by pressing ctrl shift R um, I think this is a, a known issue now but a lot of people did not know uh, a while ago I mean you still might not know it uh, but it's possible to rename tabs um, this is really useful if you don't want to get lost in your hundreds and hundreds of tabs I've seen screenshots of people having close to 400 tabs and without one being uh, named and I just don't know how they figured it out but I strongly suggest using tabs, uh, sorry, renaming tabs, it'll just be easier to manage and um, yeah, it just makes your life a lot easier. And let's say you do have a couple of tabs, uh, let's say a dozen or something, instead of clicking through each one, you can actually use uh, Control minus and Control plus to switch over tabs. Uh, this is a lot easier and it'll go a lot faster than, than using your, your mouse all the time. And we can also see here the send button and the um, go back and, and forward uh, buttons here. Um, these by default um, are not configured, I believe, um, the hotkeys, but I strongly suggest doing so um, so that it will be easier to, to play with, um, with burp repeater. Um, so instead of having to send to click on send and click on back to go to your previous request that was sent you can just use your keyboard and press control minus control plus and for me I configured um, 
Oh, no, sorry, not control my current plus. This is what you 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 prefer. You can set it up. Uh, and for me, for example, I did um, control G to replay the request. Um, so that if I, if I configure something in the request differently from the previous one, I press Control G and send over my request and, and then I, I go from there. So it just makes your life a lot easier by using shortcuts. And in the response, if you're looking for something specific, um, you can obviously put a search uh, at the bottom, but I also suggest using the auto scroll to match when the text changes. Um, this is really useful, for example, if you have a, a huge response and you're scrolling to try to see exactly like how many how many times it was there. Uh, if you just use auto scroll and use the um, forward and back buttons, it'll just go directly to it, um, which is really good. It'll also make um, your life easier and it'll just go faster for finding um, what you need. Uh, control shift i now to switch to uh, the intruder tab so uh, intru with, within intruder we have four sub tabs uh, target positions payloads and options uh, this these were all uh, viewed uh, in the first burp suite course uh, i'm just going to show you a bit more tips and tricks uh, in burp intruder so the first one if you have a, a request for example in uh, in, your, in the target tab or in repeater. If you right click on it, you can send it to intruder. Uh, for example, this one here. And if you select your target, uh, I mean your insertion point, and then right click, you can scan your defined insertion point. Uh, this is really useful if you want to scan only that specific uh, insertion point and not the whole request itself. Because if you just scan a regular request, it'll test headers, uh, URL paths, uh, pretty much everything. Uh, but in this case, it only tests that specific. Um, if you look at the uh, intruder payloads, um, we have the option to add some payload processing. Uh, this is really useful as well uh, if you want to add a prefix or a suffix to your um, insertion point, or um, if you want to use a, a, if you want to do match and replace rules as well in there. Um, a lot of useful features where you could potentially uh, use this feature. Um, I suggest playing with it at first because sometimes you, you don't expect what it would be. Um, so I just, just suggest playing with it. Uh, this is the only way to, to get used to it is to actually test it and, and, and configure it yourself and see how it goes. I mean, it's there for a reason. Um, so actually just starting to, to use it as well. Um, and also in intuitive payloads, um, if you go scroll all the way down, we have the payload encoding. Uh, this is all often forgotten. Um, so if you put in a list of payloads which have these these, these um, special characters, sometimes um, it well I mean it'll get you're, you're encoded and they won't. Um, how could I say this? Um, it won't be as you thought it would be. Um, in intruder payloads, if you scroll all the way down um, in payload encoding. Uh, here you have um, the URL encoding of, of special characters. Uh, this is pretty important to uh, to check before you run the attack because sometimes um, you have special characters in your payloads that you don't want to be encoded or that you want encoded. And depending on, on your needs, um, it might just fail your, fail your attack because um, certain payloads won't work as intended. So I strongly suggest to don't forget this setting here and to make sure that everything is, is set up properly so that once your attack runs, well, you don't have to run it again and just like do double the work um, and waste some time for nothing. So just make sure everything is all set and ready to run before you run your attack. Um, when you run your attack, um, I'm not sure if you ever noticed, but there's often a, a, a line that's empty, doesn't have a position or payload. This is uh, what we can see here in the comment is the baseline request. Um, this is the request that was sent uh, from a repeater or your proxy um, or directly from, from the target uh, tab. And so you already know what to expect as, as you use that request to send it to intruder. So it's, I would say it's a useless uh, line here because, I mean, you already know what to expect. You already know what's, what's the request and the, and the response. So it's possible to remove it and Burp has created a setting for it. Um, so in, 
in intruder options if you scroll all the way down to uh, attack results um, you can um, change this by unchecking the make unmodified baseline request this will remove um, that baseline request from your attack so the next time you run it um, you won't have that empty line and um, one important thing to use an intruder is a uh, grep match um, if you know what to expect um, in the response, um, you can use grep match. What it does is, um, let's say you have a, you're testing for XSS, and um, you want to see if it's reflected. Uh, what, you, what I usually do is like put a, a keyword, for example, the test. I put it somewhere in my payload, so that I know if, if it's reflected somewhere, I can just go search for it directly. Um, and another case would be to um, enumerate users or something, and you're looking for admin. Um, well, if you look for, if you put in the, the admin keyword in the grep match, it'll create a column in your attack that shows which um, request has the keyword admin. And it's a good way of of finding uh, what you need in in your attack. Because if you have like, an attack that has ten thousand of of requests, sometimes filtering out the ones you want are it's quite difficult. Um, so with grep match, it's pretty easy to pretty easy to do. And you can also um, do it with the regex, as we can see here in the screenshots, as well as case sensitive. And um, depending on what you're testing and, and fuzzing, uh, you can either, either include or exclude your HTTP headers from the response. And uh, contrary to um, grep match, if you don't know what to expect, you can use grep extract. So what this does is um, it extracts uh, a certain content between, um, I would say, other content. So here, an example, um, I highlighted um, the content of the title of the uh, meta tag property. And for example, I, if I have a, a ton of requests, which and I want to extract the titles of, of each pages, I would highlight this part, and it would automatically fill out the the section on top of it, so we can see here where it start after, after expression and and at the limiter here. So this would highlight automatically what I want to see um, in, the, in the attack. Or we can actually use regex as well here and put your own um, syntax in and you'll, it'll do the job for you as well. And this is what it looks like once you run, run the attack. Uh, it, it creates another column with the data that you have um, that it highlighted between the areas where you wanted to, to want you want to see. Um, one thing that's often forgotten about Intuit as well, uh, it has a good um, I mean main menu. Um, you can save your attack, um, and by default, Burp doesn't save your Intuit attacks. I save there everything in repeater, proxy, all that stuff, except it doesn't save your intruder attacks by default. So uh, you can save them from here. Uh, you can also save only. You can also save only the results table. Uh, this will export in a CSV file. Um, same thing for server responses. You can serve. You can save that, and also the attack configuration. So for example, you can save uh, what you used as payloads, um, the uh, insertion points, and all the config. All the config that comes with it. It's really useful if you want to um, run an attack and run it a couple of days later. You'll have the exact same settings that you have that, that you had before. And also in Intruder itself, when you go to the main menu of it, um, you can also um, open a saved attack uh, that you had saved previously. Um, you can just, you can also scan only the defined insertion points as we saw earlier on. Uh, you can either all, uh, send it to repeater. Or um, load the identity config um, that I saw that I showed you previously as well. Um, you can also copy that config to another tab. Um, as we can see here, we can copy from the previous tab um, to the next tab that we're going to open with the exact same config that was used. And one also one more thing that's really cool as well is uh, we can configure our predefined payload list. Um, so instead of using the default burp uh, word list. We can use something like a secklist or fuzzdb, uh, where we where there are plenty of plenty of uh, payloads that we can use um, for testing uh, when and fuzzing. 
So it's really useful when you want to test more than what burp has as defaults. So next up, um, we're going to go to decoder. Um, as you'll see, um, we won't really use it as much. Um, instead, we're going to use shortcuts or hotkeys, as well as the extension called Hackverter. So um, let's say you're in burp repeater, um, you have a string that's uh, basic 4 encoded. Instead of right clicking and do send to, send to decoder and then going in there uh, and then basic 4 decoding it and getting the result as a string and then copying it somewhere or, or whatever how you want, how you need to manipulate it. Um, you can simply do um, control or command and shift and B for base64. Uh, as you can see, um, I, we don't see all the shortcuts here, but if you just like browse um, or use them, your mouse to see what shortcuts are used, you can use that instead. Uh, it's just really faster if you just use shortcuts and instead of having to, to browse to a burp decoder and then click on the mouse to decode and all that. Um, it's really fast and it'll be, you'll notice it's, your workflow is, will really improve by doing so. And also it prevents um, making mistakes of copy and pasting. Uh, Burp Decoder also has limited functionality. Um, so you can URL encode, um, HTML encode, um, base64 encode, decode. Um, and it doesn't have much more than that. Um, so what we're going to suggest here is use the extension Hackverter. Hackverter, um, as we'll see, is a really good extension. Um, it uses XML-like tags to specify the type of encoding conversion used. Um, we can also nest tags within other tags. So for example, we can um, we can big64 uh, text and then URL encode that big64 text, text, sorry, and then we could even hash that URL encoded big64 text. And also has a, a known its own tab as well, where there are plenty of of, of um, they call it hackverters. When you want to um, encode or decode. Um, a string, whether it be from URL or HTML or B64. Um, what we used to do is send it to decoder and then from there we would encode or decode depending on our needs. Um, this is not really, um, I mean it, it's slow to use because you have to switch tabs, uh, use your mouse and click uh, once in a while and eventually you'll get your string. Uh, the fastest way to use this is to use shortcuts or hotkeys. Um, you can you can encode and decode pretty much the same thing as what you can do as um, as Burp Decoder. Um, you can um, you will encode URLs. I um, mean, URL encoding, um, HTML encoding, uh, Base64 encoding, and also construct strings in um, JavaScript, um, MS, MS SQL, Oracle, and MySQL. Um, and this is really useful when you want to bypass uh, certain WAFs that um, have certain um, uh, blacklist where you can't use specific strings or special characters. This is a lot faster than having to switch tabs to decoder um, and encode and decode your, your strings. Um, it also prevents mistakes by avoiding having to copy paste um, all the time as well. So it's, it's pretty useful when you want to do a, a quick uh, encode or decode. However, um, the Burp Decoder has its limits. Um, it cannot encode and decode everything. It doesn't do hashing. Um, it also doesn't do uh, compression. However, um, Burp Decoder does have um, limited functionality. Um, it doesn't have um, all sorts of, of encoding and decoding. It doesn't have compression, uh, encryption, um, conversion, for example, ASCII to BIN. 
Um, does it have all types of string manipulation, hashing, um, and all sorts of um, of manipulation we can do with you that you can do with strings? So if, to replace Burp Decoder, I strongly suggest using Hackverter. Um, Hackverter is an excellent extension um, which uses XML-like tags to specify what type of encoding that you want to use. Um, you can also nest tags between, uh, I mean, within each other, so that you can have a uh, Base64 encoded um, string inside of a URL encoded inside of a hash, for example. Which is really useful um, when you want to manipulate the text and don't have to um, encode and decode every single time as well. It'll do it automatically for you. Hackverter, uh, it has approximately 150 hackverters, that's actually how they call it. Um, this is um, modules of, of encoding, decoding, uh, hashing, uh, character sets, compression, uh, encryption, conversion, all that stuff. Um, so there's a, it has a lot more functionality than Burp Decoder. Uh, with this, there's no need to use online tools um, because it practically does everything you would need to uh, in, the web, in the web application. Um, there's no scripting needed, so you don't need to um, to run a small Python or Bash script. Um, it can also be used from the from the um, repeater or intruder contextual menu, uh, meaning that if you right-click on a request, I have the option to um, use uh, Hackverter. It's also useful uh, to bypass uh, WAFs um, because you can play with the character sets and um, play with manipulation strings and all that stuff. So it's really useful to, uh, to bypass WAFs. Um, it's also useful in complex encoding scenarios. For example, if you have a, a string that's, big, that's basics for encoded uh, inside a JSON array that is URL encoded, um, you could put all of that um, in a single um, single line of XML tags and it'll do all the work for you so you don't have to encode it yourself. And uh, if you have like a, an, an encoded um, request or sorry if you have an encoded content um, you can use the auto decode and, and convert and it'll automatically um, put the XML tags for you so you know, you know uh, what was used to encode, decode or convert or whatever that was um, done on the string. As we can see here from the contextual menu uh, and burp repeater, um, if we go to Hackverter, we have the option to send it to Hackverter, uh, meaning that we can use the Hackverter tab directly in burp and play with the um, with the modules themselves or, or the Hackverters themselves. Um, we can also convert tags depending on, on what we need. Uh, we can auto decode and convert, uh, which as I explained earlier, it'll do all the work for you or it'll try to detect what was been used and do it for you. Um, or you can do it manually as well. You can select um, any type of encoding, decoding, uh, conversion, hashing, and all that stuff. And the same thing with, with Intruder. Um, you can invoke it as a payload processing uh, function. So um, depending on, on the need, um, you can um, do, for example, um, I mean, there's already a, a way to B64 encode with the, the burp default of payload processing, but there are a lot more that you can do hybrid or which burp doesn't support by default. So you can use this um, to, to manipulate your, your attacks in burp intruder. And onto Logger++. As you can imagine, um, Logger++ logs a lot, as the name uh, suggests. So we'll see what exactly it does. Um, this extension um, is really useful for um, really everything. Because um, you can see all the requests that is being sent through, uh, through Burp. So all, re all requests that are sent in the scanner, uh, repeater, um, proxy, obviously, uh, as well as, as, well as, as extensions. Um, and usually we can only see the requests that we proxy in um, with our browser. But in this case, we can see every single um, tool in Burp, all, all the requests are sent in Logger++. 
So this is what the Logger++ looks like. Um, we can see here it has plenty of columns of all the requests uh, that went through um, either the proxy repeater, uh, scanner, or other extensions, extensions that you were using in Burp. Um, so as I said earlier, it logs every single request that goes through uh, goes through your, your proxy. Um, if we if we select a request, we can see in the bottom of the window in the screenshot that I posted here. Uh, we can see the details of the request as if we were in repeater, and from there we can simply right click and and either send to repeater or do the same thing as you regularly regularly do from the, either the proxy or a repeater or intruder or whichever other uh, burp feature. And if we look at the uh, logger plus plus options, here we can see exactly what I have explained earlier about the that, the fact that we can export to uh, CSV logs. Um, we can either also uh, enable the Elasticsearch and um, also import uh, the burp proxy history directly as well. If it if it, if you disabled it uh, when you were when you started the uh, burp. So this is where you configure all these uh, all of these options. Um, so if we look at a request in particular and right click, we have a logger plus plus option here uh, in the uh, menu. Um, so we can, if we select a, a specific um, a specific piece of, of, of the request that we want to highlight as a search feature, you can right click, uh, go to logger plus plus and use selection as, as filter. Uh, this will create a request, uh, sorry, this will create a filter for you automatically um, and they will um, select all of the requests that have the specific filter in your uh, window and then it'll filter it out with those specific requests. Everything else will be removed and until you clear the, the filter. And you, we can see here that by um, highlighting my my name on the bug crowd uh, website, uh, it created this filter here, request headers um, equals equal uh, slash jrock17 slash. Um, if you want to know exactly how the syntax works, um, Logger++ has this fantastic uh, help menu um, which we can learn their filter fields so to easily understand uh, how we can do this. So if we go to um, the filter library, we actually have a few um, default ones that we can use as they're usually quite useful. Um, and then there, if you save um, filters, um, you can, you'll you see them here as well. So you can um, export them and later on and as use them uh, as, you, as you need them. And um, like I, I was saying, um, if we go to help and then filter fields, we have a, a huge list of um, obviously filter fields that we can use. Um, so that way we can better filter out exactly what we're looking for. So for example, if you're looking for, for a specific um, payload or specific um, IP or, or whichever ID or anything, um, we can easily create filters this way. And it's, it's nice it's, it's to have to, um, like instead of having to go through a proxy or or the target uh, tab or a repeater and try to find it in search, well, this will, well, I mean, Logger++ is better because you can search through all three at the same time. So it's really nice to um, to, to have and I strongly suggest using uh, Logger++. There's one little thing that I have to mention to you guys. Um, so Logger++, plus plus, um, if you don't have it at the bottom of your uh, of your extensions in the um, extension tab, um, it won't log all of the extension that is not under it. It's a little trick, I'd say. Um, so like like you can see here, it really needs to be the last extension in the bottom of the of the list. So if you don't have it in the last one, um, just click on it and. Uh, go uh, press the down button so you can put it all the way down um, so that it logs all of, all of the extension as well. Um, so I'd like to thank uh, Nicolas Gregoire, as known as Agari underscore FR. Um, I learned most of my burp knowledge from him and his excellent burp suite uh, course. Um, if you ever have a chance to uh, attend his course, I strongly suggest it. It's a three day course. Um, 
Yeah, I'd say just pretty advanced. So um, we learn a, a lot of stuff from from his courses. Um, so yeah, a big thank to him, big shout out. So uh, thank you a lot, uh, Nicholas. And that's it for that's it for this course. Um, we're gonna have some more uh, later on. Um, so if you have any questions uh, about what we discussed today, uh, just reach out on, to me on, on Twitter and I'll be uh, happy to uh, help you as much as I can. Thank you very much.